Hey, I'm Courtney Waterman, your tutor. Lover of anime, manga, and math. And you just tuned into another session of Tutor Me Senpai. Welcome back, everyone. Today we're jumping into a fourth grade topic, finding the perimeter of a shape. Now, if you're new to my channel, I'll be putting time codes in for this video in the description box below. So use it to skip ahead to whatever part of video you think is most interesting. As always, if you have any questions about what we see today or even your own homework, you can always visit me on my Facebook page at Tunami Senpai and tell me all about it there. This video is going to have three parts. So leave a like, smash subscribe, and let's get started. Let's say we're given this shape here and we were asked to find the perimeter of this shape. Well, that question is really just asking you to find the distance around the entire shape, but not just any distance. We want the shortest distance around the entire shape. But what does that mean? Does that mean that if we found this distance here, is that gonna be the perimeter? We're going around the entire shape? No, this is not the shortest distance because you have all this other stuff that's not the shape. We have all this stuff that we're not caring about. So we don't want to necessarily do that. So if it's not that, is it something instead like this, where you go something in here? Is that going around the entire shape? Well, we're going around, but we're missing all this stuff out here that is still part of the shape. We're not going the full distance of the shape. So instead of going all the way around, like that big circle that was way too big, and instead of going all the way around in this small circle inside, which is way too small, how do we find what's just right, our perimeter that's just right? Well, the distance that you need to travel in order to find the perimeter is going to be just the border or the sides of your shape. So if you're going along the actual side or the border of your shape like this, this is going to be the shortest distance around the entire shape. You just hit up each and every side. So you're traveling along the border, you're traveling along each side, and that's your perimeter. You're not getting too much, and you're not getting too little. You're traveling exactly around the shape. The smallest distance around the shape is gonna be your perimeter. So in order to find this perimeter, you're gonna to need to have two things. You need each side to have a number associated with it. We can't find the distance if we have no numbers. So let's say we had eight, we have four, four, eight. So we have some numbers, but you're gonna need something else. Each side should not only have a number, but should have a unit. So let's say this was cm for centimeters. Let's rewrite this to get some space for cm. Now we have our numbers and our units associated with each side. And the units are very important. We don't wanna forget those because the perimeter, our perimeter is going to have the same unit that we have for our side. So if we have centimeters up here, it's going to be a centimeter down here for your perimeter. So don't ever forget your units. If it's inches, it's gonna be inches here. If it's feet, it's gonna be feet here. If it's meters, it's gonna be meters here. Whatever your sides have for their units, you're gonna have that same unit down here for the perimeter. So we got the unit squared away, but how do we find that perimeter? Well, we said we're gonna be traveling along each side. So if I was to travel from this to this, how far did I go? From this to this, well, I traveled eight centimeters. Now, when you're when you're doing this math, you don't need to necessarily keep the centimeters as long as you have it down here, because you're just going to be adding the numbers. But make sure you don't forget the the unit right at the end. But if I'm going from here to here, I traveled eight centimeters. Now, let's say I want to go from here to here. How far did I travel? I traveled four centimeters. But how far did I travel from here? To here now well if we're going along the sides we went eight plus another four so we have eight plus four and let's say I want to go from here to here now so going from here all the way to here we went eight four another eight so we're adding another eight here 
And let's say instead of stopping here, because we want to go all the way around, we want to go from here to here. Now we travel another four. So we went eight, four, eight, four. That's our perimeter. You add up all of your sides, and that's going to be your perimeter. Don't miss a side. If we stop right here, that's not the perimeter. We didn't go the full length around the entire shape. We have to go all the way around, so we have to add up all of the sides. So what do you get when you have eight plus four plus eight plus four? Well, this is going to be 24. Now, once again, 24 what? We have to have our units. Luckily, we already have it down here. It's 24 centimeters because you went eight centimeters, four centimeters, eight centimeters and four centimeters. So you're gonna have 24 centimeters for your perimeter. And when you're doing this trick to find your perimeter by simply adding up all your sides, it's important to know that this is only gonna work when you have shapes with straight sides. So all your shapes that have nothing but straight sides, you can do this. It doesn't matter how many sides you have. The last one we had had four sides. This one has three. It's going to be the same thing. But when you start having shapes with curves in it, that's gonna be a little bit different. So we'll actually cover circles in another video. This one is just gonna be all your shapes with straight sides. So how do you find the perimeter for this triangle? We know that all of our sides have a number and a unit. So if we are trying to find the perimeter, what will we have to do? Well, we identify what is our unit. Well, we have inches now. Now we simply travel from one side to the next until we get back to where we started. So let's say we're starting up here. We travel five, we travel eight, we travel six, and we're back. So that means we're doing five plus eight plus six. Now what do you get when you're adding five plus eight plus six? Well, this is going to be 19. But 19 what? Don't forget your units. If you hadn't written them in already, make sure you're putting your inches here because all of these have inches. So the perimeter for this shape is going to be 19 inches. And just to drive the point home, here we have a shape with a lot more sides than our first two shapes. What is going to be the perimeter for this shape? Well, let's start with our units. What's the units for our perimeter? We have feet here, so we're going to start by writing our feet down here. The perimeter is going to have the same unit. So here we have six plus four plus seven plus four plus six. So that's six plus four plus seven plus four plus six. And what do you get when you add up all of those? Well, this is going to be 27, but 27 what? 27 feet. That's your perimeter. So it doesn't matter how many sides you have, if they're all straight, all you're doing is adding up all your sides. That's gonna be your perimeter. That's going to be the shortest distance around your entire shape. Now there may be some times when you're given a question and you don't have all of your sides. Well, what does that mean? Does it mean that the person forgot to give you information? Not necessarily. Sometimes when you have your missing sides, that just means that the other sides are going to be the same as something that's already there. So in this case, we have something where we have one side and we're not giving any of the other three. This would be a very good indication of all of these sides being equal to the side that's given, which makes this a square because a square has all four equal sides. So if you're given a shape and all you have is one, then maybe if it looks like a square, it's a square. And all of your other sides are the same value. So you can write them in here if you want. Two meters, two meters, all the way around. And if you're trying to find your perimeter, this is going to be what? Well, you're going to have two plus two plus two plus two. Two plus two plus two plus two. What is that gonna give you? Eight meters. Let's say we're given a shape like this. Here we have something where we don't know two sides. So what does that mean? Well, clearly not all the sides are equal in this shape. Here we have four kilometers, seven kilometers, two kilometers, but these two are not going to be the same 
as each other, and they're both not going to be the same as one of these. So when you have a missing size like this, what do you do? Well, let's look at our shape and try to see which sides look like they match another side there. So we have this side here. Does this side look like it matches anything else here? Well, not quite. Not quite. How about this side? Does this side look like it matches anything else here? Yes. In fact, it looks like it matches this side here. It's directly on top of it, right? So we can just fill this in and say that that's also probably going to be seven kilometers. How about this side? Does it match anything? Yes. This looks like it mirrors that one as well. So we can say that this is two kilometers. Now we've filled in all of our missing sides. Now we can add up all of our sides to find our perimeter. But first, we have what for our unit? We're gonna have kilometers now, not just meters. We're gonna have kilometers because all of these have kilometers for their unit. Now that we have our unit, what is going to be our actual number for the perimeter? Well, you're gonna have seven plus four plus seven plus two plus two. We're gonna add up all of the sides. Remember, that's all you have to do for this perimeter when you have all your sides being straight for your shape. So seven plus four plus seven plus two plus two is going to be what? Well, this is going to be 22 kilometers. For our last section for the day, we're gonna actually tackle a word problem because sometimes you're not just given a shape, but you're given a word problem. So it's important to know how to pick out your shape and make sure that you find all of the sides you are given. So here we have a word problem that says, we have a rectangular swimming pool, which is 30 centimeters wide and 40 centimeters in length. We want to find the perimeter of the swimming pool. So we have a rectangular swimming pool. Now let's just know that our swimming pool probably look something like this. Now it doesn't have to be exact, obviously, just make a rectangle and you'll be fine. But we need to know that we have a 30 centimeter wide and 40 centimeter long swimming pool here. So the longer side should technically have the bigger number. So this side that we drew was longer. So let's say that's going to be our 40 centimeters. Now, if you want it to be a little bit more, let's say, true to your word problem, and you're like, well, why it should be this, then fine, that's fine. Just draw it differently. You can say it's a swimming pool like that then, in which this is going to be 30 centimeters wide and 40 centimeters long. Because we know that this is a rectangle and rectangles have the opposite sides being equal, we know all of our missing sides. So this is also going to be 40 centimeters and this is also going to be 30 centimeters. So now we can find our perimeter. But first, what's our unit for this problem? It seems like everything has centimeters, so we're going to have centimeters over here for our perimeter. Now all we have to do is add up all of our sides and figure out what we get. So we're gonna have 30 plus 40 plus 30 plus 40. Now what's 30 plus 40 plus 30 plus 40? Well, this is going to be 140. This is going to be 100 and 40, but 140 what? 140 centimeters. All of these have centimeters, that's gonna be our unit. We're keeping the same unit. Add up everything, 30 plus 40 plus 30 plus 40 is 140 centimeters. So I hope you were able to follow along with today's video, and I hope you understand now how you can find your perimeter, at least for the shapes where all the sides are gonna be straight lines. However, if you have any questions about what you saw today or even your own homework, you can always visit me on my Facebook page at Tumi Senpai and let me know all about it there. If you hadn't done so already, remember to leave that like. It surely helps the channel by letting YouTube know that you found the video helpful. And if you found the video helpful, so can someone else. So leave a like, 
hit the notification bell, smash the subscribe button, and share the video with a friend. Well, that's all the time I have for today. I'm really hoping this helped with your homework. I'm looking forward to seeing you again next week. I'm Courtney, and this has been another session of Tutor Me Senpai.